This is the first chunk of my Ocarina of Time epic orchestral medley. I began the piece by combining the theme when Link opens a treasure chest with the theme that plays when Link receives a spiritual stone of the light arrows. That short movement served as an intro piece to set the tone of the entire medley. I wanted to start with a big splash of excitement, adventure, curiosity, and mystery. I then followed that up with an extremely playful, quaint-sounding piece, the one that plays when you're sneaking past the castle guards to get to the courtyard. Just to make that opening a little more grand, I'm copying over the chime instrument and repeating it a couple more times. And I'm also playing with the tempo, just to see what it sounds like if I slow it down a little bit at the beginning of this movement. I actually put a lot of effort into tweaking the tempos in my medleys because it helps to make a more organic orchestral sound a lot of the time. It's starting to sound a little closer to what I envisioned, but I think it requires slightly more tweaking. It sounds more like I'm easing into the theme now, which adds a sense of mischief and playfulness. I'll be adding a lot more layers to this part, but for now I'm focusing on the structure and flow of the beginning movements. This part transitions into the market theme. I utilized bouncy, upbeat strings in this part to make it feel fun and active, and to create a sense of progress and transition from the previous movement. I'll also stretch the bass clarinet into this movement in order to make the transition smoother. This is actually the MIDI I created for the market arrangement I created two years ago. I'll be using it as a reference for certain parts of this song. I added a lot of personal touches to that arrangement, and reused a couple of them in my medley. It sounds a little bit more Celtic in my version. But it will be orchestral in this medley, and I'll be making it distinct from the original as well. Here you can see that I've added more layers. It starts out more similar to the original. Then the focus shifts to Celtic sounding woodwinds. And then to a full on medieval vibe, recreated with orchestral instruments. I'll be shifting over to a Pona's song after this section. But first, I want to add just a little bit of extra depth to the market movement. I'm using violins and then oboes to maintain that bouncy feeling I described, and then... I'll use a bassoon to underscore it with bass. A shift in time signature signifies the beginning of the Lon Lon Ranch movement. 
This time, I used percussion to carry aspects of the previous movement forward and smooth the transition. And to help the transition further, the Celtic-style flute will play four transitional measures that have characteristics of both songs. I'm skipping ahead a bit here. I decided to make harp and flute the most prominent instruments for the first part of the Lon Lon Ranch movement. In order to make the harp sound more organic, I gave it a little bit of tender loving care. That's pretty much the finished transition. Well, not quite. I used a leaf stone on it and it evolved into this. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I played around with the tempo a lot during this movement in the way that I described before. Also, I'll be putting my voice in here a little bit later. Time to play off the tempo again. I'll show you a few more of the layers getting added in. added in some semi-medieval percussion, and here you can see that I've put in a few arpeggiated staccato flute notes. It makes the song sort of bounce along as though it doesn't have a care in the world even though there's a bittersweet undertone. We'll be moving along to Hyrule Field after this one. I chose to start somewhere in the middle as it transitions better that way. added harp but decided to make it an octave up. Here I'll be adding in an ocarina solo, as though to imply that Link is summoning a Pona on the field. I really wanted the listener to sort of get into the feel of the story with this part. And finally, a little bit of clarinet will help smooth that transition very slightly into Hyrule Field. This here is my Goron City movement. I made it sound slightly more active than the original just to give it, I guess, it's more of a sense of fun and adventure. Gorons, as you see later in the series, are warriors and they're fighters and they're proud. And it comes through an ocarina of time, but their race has developed more later on, so I just kind of wanted to reflect their strength and their power and their might and their courage in this movement. I sort of faded out here so that I can move it towards Kipora Gabora's theme, so it gets a little bit slower and a little bit more ponderous towards the end. But before I move on to Kapura Gabora, I'm going to show you how the finished version of my Goron City of Movement sounds in contrast with the MIDI version.
Here I'm temporarily slowing it down as I've done before. As you can see, it seems reflective and a little bit more personal when I do it, almost like the song has a mind of its own, or it's telling a story and the speaker is pausing to reflect. I think that's kind of appropriate for the character of Gabora Gabora. For my next transition, I'm actually taking this rather lighthearted theme and making it a little bit darker as it moves towards the Twin Rova theme. I decided that this transition still sounds a little bit plain to me, so I'm going to add a little bit of harp to make it a little bit more mysterious and give a sense of sudden spell being cast or some kind of sorcery, like the Twin Rover sisters have just appeared suddenly. In the end, I decided that the harp sounded better when it was sped up. And I'm sure some of you already know that the harp is my favorite instrument, so I used some of this same part later on in the piece as well during the climax. This is what it ended up sounding like. I slowed down the harp a little bit and added a few more instruments to add more impact to the climax. And you can hear coming up here the drums that will be leading into the Gerudo Valley movement, which was actually a fairly difficult piece to pull off. I've heard so many remixes of Gerudo Valley, and I wanted this one to sound unique, but I also wanted to stay close to the original. I didn't want to take the feeling away from the average fan who's in love with the Gerudo Valley song. So I had to kind of carefully blend a Middle Eastern aesthetic with a Mexican aesthetic to try and find the Gerudo tribe somewhere in between. Hopefully I pulled it off. It's really a, a matter of preference though with Gerudo Valley. <laughs> I forgot what clip I was in. That happens all the time. See? It happened again right there. Wow, I sound so Canadian on this microphone. add a lot of woodwind embellishments to my songs. I think it probably has a lot to do with growing up listening to Celtic music. I like a lot of tapestries of woodwinds weaving in and out of the piece. Ganon's about to enter the scene. This transition isn't actually based on anything in particular, but I use elements of the Shadow Temple in it. Aside from that, it's just original, I guess. You all know Ganon's theme pretty much, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but I am kind of happy and somewhat proud of what I ended up doing with this, and that was transitioning it to the theme for Inside Jabba Jabba's Belly. I 
I added these chords in for the purpose of aesthetic. Jabu Jabu is an atmospheric track. My aim was to make it into a story track for this movement. As you can see, it's somewhere we're passing through on the way to the lakeside laboratory. This would be the point at which I start using an increased number of eastern sounding instruments. The first instance of that was with the twin rover movement, I actually used a koto and shamisen in that. But in this one, I'm going to be using a fair few more, because I'm going to be going through a long procession of spiritual temple tracks. If you're someone who is familiar with musical theory and sheet music, you'll probably see the horrible, horrible mistakes I'm making here with my notation. If you're a novice composer, please don't ever write like that. Seriously, my notation right here is worthy of an F grade and I know it. Truthfully, I'm doing it out of laziness, uh, something I can get away with only in a digital interface. That's because this monster of a medley took weeks and weeks out of my life and I was trying to just get this done but there are quite a few technical no-nos in my notation here. And this is where we really get to the meat of the Lakeside Laboratory. I've always really loved this theme. We're shifting towards the Spirit Temple here, which sounds very natural. I didn't have to tweak either song too much at that particular point to make them go together. I used violins to embellish this part. I'll be adding a flute to it as well. I'll continue to add more depth and layers to this transition. At this point in the medley, even though I'm using primarily Viennese orchestral instruments like usual with these things, uh, most of the instruments are still sounding fairly Asian or Middle Eastern, sometimes a combination of both. So this oboe part here, for example, sounds just like it could have come out of Arabia, or possibly an Asian country. This part here is the theme for the Great Deku Tree. There's just so much more composing that has to take place that's already taken place, and uh, I can't really show all of it, otherwise this video would be insanely long. So I'll skip ahead some more. This is going to transition to the Forest Temple theme. Probably my favorite movement in this entire thing, although that sort of changes day to day. I've got drums playing here. They probably sound a little more intense than the ambient noises in the Forest Temple. I'm actually going to be replacing them with samples of tablas, however, when I do the mixing in Ableton. That will sound a little bit more like the original noise. Chances are that quite a few of the percussive instruments you heard in my MIDI were actually just placeholders for different samples that I'm about to use. This is the tablet section for the Lakeside Laboratory movement. Here the rhythm changes as we move towards the Spirit Temple movement. I'll be spending a lot of time tweaking these tablas usually just one note at a time in order to make them sound more alive.
I've applied some variant settings. This part is in the forest temple. As I mentioned, I'll be using the tablas to recreate the ambient sound at the beginning of the original forest temple track. Timpani is extremely important throughout this medley. Right here it helps to make the potion shot more dramatic. And it will also become the heartbeat that can be heard inside of Jabu Jabu's belly. The same heartbeat sound will also be added to Ganondorf's theme just to make him sound a little bit more threatening. It sounds a bit more like Jabu Jabu when I add in this sound effect. There is a lot more percussion to add in this piece, though. Now we'll play some of that percussion together with the tambura. This section is part of the Spirit Temple movement. The organ I used during the Ganondorf movement is also going to be used during the Spirit Temple. I feel that it adds a very particular type of ambience but it's not quite like any other instrument. The organ can also be heard in the background of my forest temple movement. Of course, this is somewhat thematically appropriate since Phantom Ganon is located in the forest temple, and that's sort of an instrument that represents them both. Now it's time to add some strings into the mix. A double bass solo persists throughout the Great Deku Tree movement. And now it's time for cellos. For this entire section of the medley, the cellos, double bass, and percussion pretty much steal the entire show. One of my favorite people in this entire galaxy once told me this quote, Nothing weeps like a cello. I really took those words to heart, and I try to make all of my cello pieces sound very emotional. I try and force a lot of different dynamic stories and ideas and feelings into my cello work. I especially wanted to do this with the Deku Tree theme, because the Deku Tree, as you've probably surmised, is a character I really appreciate in the Zelda series. Cellos are the most prominent instrument in the Lakeside Laboratory Potion Shop movement. They're also extremely prominent in the Spirit Temple movement. Although their texture is masked by the organ and the tambura. I'm going to skip ahead some more to when I have more instruments added in. In this instance, clarinets are also part of the bass. I use the violins to add a layer of mystique to the melody. Here the bassoon almost sounds like it could be Egyptian. 
Technically speaking, the bassoon is carrying the main melody of this movement. The Spirit Temple is such an ambient track that pinning down an actual main melody could be difficult. In the more ambient tracks, although there are some main melodies, the harmonies and the melodies often play off each other and use counterpoint. Just in case you're not aware of what I've been doing with these red lines, this is automation to regulate volume levels. I usually do very painstaking automation for a bunch of different effects, but mostly with volume when it comes to orchestral music. I need to have the volume of every note on every instrument just so, in order to make it sound more live and authentic. It's time for the Contra Bassoon. To get the notes that the regular bassoon cannot reach. I'm now at a point where I can properly show off my transition between Ganon's theme and Jabba Jabba's theme. This is all flowing together very smoothly. I want it to sound as though we're being taken on some kind of trippy Ocarina of Time journey. I don't know if it really looks or sounds like I've made a lot of progress here, but uh, hopefully you can still enjoy seeing it all come together. I have to spend a lot of time going back and forth, back and forth, between all the different layers, checking the volume on everything, try it with headphones, try it without headphones, try it on different speakers, Try it on the laptop, try it on the desktop, etc. I just want to make sure that it's equalized perfectly. And I don't think I've ever achieved that, but I think I'm getting closer every time I make a medley. It's a learning process. It really is. I'm not going to lie. It really has been very challenging for me to make most of these medleys. I don't know if it looks easy when I'm doing it here, but every time I've worked on one, I've learned so much. And every time I make one, I notice it's better than the last because I've learned different tricks. I don't know when you're watching this, I may have already made these by the time you watch this, but I have a lot more planned, including Twilight Princess and Link's Awakening, or for FF lovers, I'm doing another FF6 one. I'll be doing FF11, gonna do FF12. The next one to come out will be Chrono Cross, and I'm not sure after that. If you have a suggestion, feel free to tell me. There's a little oboe bit that I added here that I'm pretty proud of coming up. It goes la 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 la. In order to change it up and add more of a sense of story to this piece, I repeated the final phrase of the Deku Tree theme before it loops. Now, we're in the forest temple. It's at the very center of the medley, and it's meant to be one of the main showstoppers. It's probably the most magical sounding part. I wanted it to sound almost like it was written by fairies, or perhaps the Kokiri. Maybe even something much more ancient than that. I added to some of the ambience with rain sticks and the glockenspiel that you can see in green here. The harp has been very busy during this movement. I'm very happy with the way those descending flute notes turned out. The next chunk of the medley is comprised of several movements. Temple of Time is right after the Forest Temple, then it's Chamber of Sages, Zoro's Domain, Kakariko Village, and Zelda's Theme. 
all of those, I possibly put the most work into the Chamber of Sages movement, as well as the Zelda's theme movement. Zoro's domain, however, probably took the most planning. The reason for this is instrumentation. Once I figured out that a piano could stand in for steel drums, I had an easier time of it, but every single layer of it had to be distributed among the orchestra. My version is far more textured and complex than the original, as I wanted it to feel like a real orchestral arrangement. The transition from Temple of Time to Chamber of Sages is supposed to sound very mystical. A soft yet sudden shift into the ethereal. We start out ancient, earthy and rooted to the ground, and slowly are uplifted into a timeless spiritual space. With the Chamber of Sages, I abridged the original. The loop was over two minutes long and I didn't want to dwell on the theme too much. If you're already very familiar with the original Chamber of Sages, you might be able to hear some of the differences between the original and my version. The next challenge would be to bridge to Vizora's domain theme. I focused primarily on all the tinkly ethereal instruments. I realized that what the two songs have most in common is that they both sound reminiscent of shimmering light and falling water droplets. I distributed the Zora melody between several parts because I wanted to give it a sense of delicate, soothing ambience, gentle music echoing in a watery cave. This movement is also meant to function as the reprieve after all the dungeon tracks. I'll show you some of my work on Zora's domain in Ableton. At this point, I've already loaded in quite a few instruments. The song's really coming to life now that I've got these samples in here. I actually briefly considered putting in a Zora Hall movement in my Majora's Mask medley, but I ultimately decided against it. I figured it would be better just to put in the Ocarina of Time one, and then make another Zora's Domain remix on its own later. Here I'm hoping to demonstrate that Zora's Domain and Chamber of Sages can actually be considered aesthetically related even though the mood of each piece is very different. Sometimes I like to add the woodwinds and the brass before I do the strings. In this piece, I found it more convenient to add the strings before I add any woodwinds in. I've said this before and I'll probably say it again, but you should always use multiple samples of any string instruments you're using if you want it to sound remotely realistic. I tried my best. <laughs> This movement has a lot of delicate work with triangles and chimes. Those instruments naturally create ambience and dissonance, which is very appropriate for the kind of theme I'm going for. Everything in the medley, from
from Zora's Domain right until the final movements, with maybe the exception of Song of Storms, is sort of the feel-good section of the medley. It's the part that's supposed to make you happy, kind of reward you for sitting through the tense parts. Song of Storms makes a lot of people happy, but it sounds a little bit more tense in my medley than some of the other pieces. It's more of an adventure piece, as we'll be getting to later. The rest are all very uplifting and playful and joyful. Now this particular part is sort of the most graceful part of the happy movements. It utilizes a lot of strings because of that. I find the strings can be very peaceful, gives a sense of smoothness. Kakariko Village in particular was meant to be uplifting. It's happy, it's sweet, it really says Home is where the heart is. That was my message with this piece. I wanted to go through all these beautiful landscapes, the forest temple, the spirit temple, the temple of time, and even Zora's domain is, is very beautiful and, and very laid back, but it doesn't quite have the same sweetness as Kakariko Village. The strings here are meant to illustrate that. The, st the strings are playing very sweetly. They sound honest, they sound loving. There's a sense of family and community. And there's a sense of Link resting in a particular way, maybe even spending the night at one of the houses or having soup with that woman who never stops cooking or something like that. And as you just heard in my transition there, the most beautiful, most poignant and memorable part of that reprieve for Link is probably seeing Princess Zelda again after all those years apart. He may not remember the years, but I get a sense like his soul remembers her. I mean, if you think about it, he's only seen her once or twice in childhood, but she's so important to him, and I think that's because of their connection that they share. Now I want to show that in the music here, not just her character, but also Link's story, his connection to her and the Triforce, and her beauty, and her grace. So I shifted Kakariko Village over to Zelda, because the only thing more beautiful, perhaps, than the feeling of family coming from Kakariko is, is that feeling of purity coming from her. When I'm making medleys, I like to think that any set of three songs in the medley can be their own piece, or their own medley. So in this case, the shift from Zora's Domain to Kakariko to Zelda's theme is its own piece. In the same capacity, when we bump over one, the shift from Kakariko to Zelda's theme and then to the title screen will feel like its own piece different kind of transition, different chunk of the medley, different chapters overlapping. Just trying to demonstrate how all three movements have things in common. Pizzicato cello time now. This part actually reminds me of the Snowhead Temple. Now it's time to add in those familiar cellos that everyone associates with Kakariko Village. I'll be doubling them up with another cello sample to make them sound more lush. Many more string parts are going to be added to these sections. Now I'll be adding in some clarinet, oboe, ocarina, and flute.
Anyway, you get the idea. Time for more Glock and Spear now. And lastly, bass clarinets and bassoons. After Zelda's theme was the title theme, which I've had to stagger in several places in order to make it sound more live and organic, as though somebody was playing it on a real piano. Part of this process involved making sure that no two measures were exactly the same in this movement. It needed to sound freeform. The ocarina track got the same treatment, of course. In my mind, I was envisioning Link laying down in the evening in Hyrule Field practicing the ocarina. Throughout this medley, the ocarina gets many solos. I'm sure you understand why this is appropriate. I especially tried to make interesting ocarina solos for the songs that Link can learn. I use fermatas for the same reason that I use tempo adjustments. They make the piece sound more organic. When I compose one of these orchestral medleys, I envision a conductor lifting their hand and feeling the moment. And here comes that feeling of grace and victory. Final movements were meant to be the most fun part of the medley. This is sort of like the celebration that takes place after the recuperation. Link starts out on his journey, goes through his ordeals, recovers at home, reconnects with his inner child, and then goes out to celebrate. This here is the theme that plays when Link gets a medallion. I had to do the whole thing from ear. But it was a good thing, really, because it gave me a chance to do all kinds of crazy embellishments to make it sound a little bit more regal and grand. Now the feeling of transitioning into the Kokiri Forest feels so much sweeter and more well-deserved, doesn't it? We've established that home is where the heart is with Kokiriko Village, but this is another kind of home is where the heart is scenario. This is going back to your childhood, going back to your roots. And for many of us watching this video, Ocarina of Time is their childhood, or a significant part of it, at least. Most of you probably never forgot the first time you tried the game, the first time you stepped out of that tree fort and took a look at the river and all the different parts of the forest. And back then, it all seemed so much more real. I tried to capture our collective childhoods in this portion of the medley. to try to transition that part seamlessly into the Lost Woods theme. This midi here is the first Zelda song I ever did. Lost Woods. You've probably heard it on my YouTube channel. If not, 
might be interesting to listen just to see how much I've improved and how much I haven't improved. I'm putting some Lost Woods percussion into the Kokiri movement to make the transition smoother. I'm also giving the Kokiri movement this active harp layer to make it a little bit more upbeat so that it will sound more consistent with the Lost Woods. started on the wrong beat. that transition will be smoother, and the song itself will be less like my previous remix and less like the original. gonna watch me working on Song of Storms. I'll be adding quite a bit of percussion to this piece to give it a sense of drama. More pizzicato strings as well. I feel that they really suit the feeling of Song of Storms. And some harp as well. Huh, I just noticed that those were the first three notes in character making from FF Tactics. I'll skip most of the fiddling with the harp and just show you what it sounds like when the harp part here is finished. Ah, that's so satisfying to me. This should really be an octave up. Link will be playing his ocarina again at this part. Now we'll try it with a few more layers in. Now for the background there were a few different instruments that I considered. This accordion sound was the first one I wanted to try. I did most of my composing and editing with the accordion sound, I played around with it a fair bit. Ultimately, however, I decided to go with the church organ, as we'll be seeing later. Skipping ahead further into the composition process, I've already switched over to the organ and have done quite a bit of work here, you can probably see many more channels are filled up. One of the main features of this part of the medley is the key switch I'll be doing. You can hear it heading into there right now. It's almost got sort of a circus vibe going, which I was sort of proud of. It added to the cookie weird world feeling that I sometimes get when I hear that song. Kakariko is full of mysteries and secrets, and this song sort of exemplifies that. I'm very happy with what I did with my woodwinds right here. I feel that they sort of help the song move along, and I almost feel like I'm dancing when I hear it.
Well, I'm sure you recognize this percussive track. And it's time for the very tedious process of varying my drums. There are lots of different ways to vary percussion, but sometimes it's tedious, especially when you have to do it with different samples being on different notes. I think I'll just skip ahead a bit. I tried to make this one sound mystical and playful and dreamy. And coming up will be one of Link's many ocarina solos. I've actually blended the Lost Woods theme here with many elements from the ending music that plays when they all have a big party and the Gorons sing along. I actually have some noises in this medley to represent the Gorons singing. This part had to be especially emotional for the listener. Anyone who's played Ocarina of Time is going to associate this song with the first time they booted up the game. I wanted it to be special. I wanted it to be sort of a magical moment where they just stop and reflect and everything goes still. Clarinets and oboes are also exciting. A fun fact may be that I love the oboe so much, it's probably in my top five and the main reason for this is because I associate it with Zelda. In particular, I associate it with Skull Kid. Now this is partly because of synesthesia and partly because when I heard the song and at the climax there was a harmony that sounded like an oboe. I always pictured that that was one of the Skull Kids playing along with Saria in the forest. Synesthesia is actually the reason that you see me color coding everything the same way every time. The oboe is orange, partly because it's sort of like a flute but more fiery to me. It seems like an instrument that has quite a temper. I think that's appropriate for Skull Kid as well. The Skull Kid seems autumnal and manic. They're sort of like the decay aspect of the forest. The darker side, if you will. There's a naughty little imp inside of every child, and that's sort of what the Skull Kid represents. That inner madness that we all kind of have. For me, this is actually a part of the music. Another manic part of the series is the association with death. There's the bottom of the well and the shadow temple, and all the different enemies. Right from the beginning, you're fighting skeletons, you're fighting re-deads, you're fighting ghosts or pose. And the series confronts this as though it's quaint or even normal. It adds almost a Halloween-like beauty to the series. It's very much at peace with death. There's sort of an animism present. Song of Storms, as I mentioned before, brushes against that aesthetic very well. I'll just show you what the accordion sounded like in the place of the organ. It was really hard for me to choose between the two. I think I actually chose the organ because it felt a little bit darker and the association with death was actually a bit stronger. This movement was sort of meant to be Link looking back on his adventures, or maybe the listener being thrown into the spirit of the adventure. We've been through the ordeals, we've been through the spiritual section, we've been through the emotional rebirth section, so to speak. Now we're looking back on the danger, and more importantly, remembering Link's courage, or the player's courage. We went through all those things together and we rose above it. That's sort of what I'm going for here. That's where it's going to transition into the fairy fountain theme, but before I go ahead, I'm just going to show you a few more instruments getting added to the Song of Storms since it's such an elaborate piece.
the final two movements are the Fairy Fountain, as I mentioned, and Sheik's theme. It's always difficult to choose which song to end on and which song to start on. I want there to be a good reason to start or end on any given track if I'm going to use it. I chose to end on Sheik's theme because Sheik functions somewhat as a storyteller. This is also sort of a good piece to wind down with. It's more calm and it still has a lot of nostalgia. Naturally, the Fairy Fountain is also something I would consider to be a recovery piece. Link goes there to get his wounds healed, and I think he also kind of gets a sort of emotional healing when he goes there. I think it's sort of a total rejuvenation of body and soul. Otherwise, he'd be pretty traumatized from some of the things he has to face. I'll cut this video short now. If you've watched this long, I appreciate that you stuck around and that we're interested. If you haven't heard the medley, there's a link below to listen to it. Feel free to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.